Office him ancient and modern twenty four 
M24. Please let's stand. Son of my soul, the Savior dear. Significant. Oh 
John chapter 20 verse 19 to 23 Engo edin leke engwa wam le echoame keke ni kaselo ele na minche ake amena nun chole agwene yesu sa eke ame eko ake he jole ahanye boni chele chumile naka imihu mi chunye ne nyongo jumole ne non dimitis non dimitis I'm 
ministers with righteousness. Time, O oh Lord, oh God, may clean our hearts within us. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and eternity. To Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, from whom all it desires, all good counsels and all jacks where do proceed. Give unto thy servant that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandment, and also that by thee we be defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time and rest in quietness to the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. Light in our darkness we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy Holy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us grace as this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and that promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou will grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servant, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us share the words of the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Him ancient and modern, one hundred and thirty four. Him one hundred and thirty four.
created and let us pray. We give you our holy thanks, every Father, for the resurrection power. We thank you, O God, for today. As we have witnessed the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, we invite you into our midst tonight. Father, come and speak your word to us. Come, O God, and equip us as instruments of your hands. So that, Lord, we will go out there to proclaim your good news to the whole world. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My dear people of God, it was the resurrection night. The disciples were meeting in Jerusalem in the room with the doors shut when Jesus appeared among them. This dramatic scene provides the content of John's last reference to the Holy Spirit in this gospel. Jesus bestowed the Holy Spirit who will help the disciples in many ways. Jesus and the Spirit restore their faith empowers the disciples and help them to proclaim the power of the message of the good news to the whole world. This scripture that was read from John chapter 20 from verse 19 to verse 23, first part of text or the verses in the Bible that we see Jesus Christ sending out his disciples to go and fulfill one duty or the other. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, we saw Jesus sending the disciples out, instructing them to go to the Gentiles and to the Samaritans. In Mark chapter 6, verse 7, he said, And he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs and gave them authority over unclean spirits. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, he says, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So beware as you go out there. For three and a half years, the disciples had been with Jesus. And now they were ready to be sent out to fulfill the mission of Christ. Their lives were about to get even more interesting than they were in those days. Each one of them will leave their father, their mother, their wives and children, brothers and sisters for far lands to teach and to preach the good news. James studies has proven that was sent to Spain. Andrew, who found part of the disciples, was sent to Europe. Peter went to Italy. Simon went to Egypt and later Libya. Thomas went to India, where these men propagated the gospel of Christ. These fishermen were on large, of, uh, 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 were, were on large going to all parts of the nations to make sure that they would preach the good news to all men. Jesus still sent messengers out into the lost world and the evil world. And tonight, God is sending us into this world to go and propagate the resurrection power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every generation of Christians carries the responsibility and privilege of spreading the good news about Jesus Christ. A follower of Christ who fails to share their faith with another is guilty of a great sin. What greater sin is there? For a believer to be content with a family member or friend or dear one or a neighbor going to hell. It is very true that God is the one who draws men to himself. It is God who saves, but we cannot, by our cunning, our persuasion, ability, or our good intentions, save anyone. But the beauty of the gospel is that God 
has sovereignly chosen us to use as communicators or ambassadors to propagate his gospel to the whole world. We live in this world of sin. We live in this world where evil has, be, has filled every heart. And tonight, God is sending us to go and propagate the gospel just as Jesus Christ sent his disciples. Today, as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, I want you to remind, I want to remind you of the mission of every Christian on earth. I do not want you to live here tonight feeling guilty. I do not want you to live here tonight feeling obligated. I want you to live here excited and eager to share the gospel of Christ to everyone that you come across. In this passage of scripture that we read from John, we got to know that God equips us with three provisions for our mission to share his good news to the whole world. The first of such is the peace that comes from the resurrection or the, from the resurrected Christ. The peace that comes from the resurrected Christ. John chapter 20 from verse 19 to 21. The disciples of Jesus were behind locked doors, afraid to set foot outside. At this point in their lives, you cannot get them to talk about anything or to say anything about Christ. They were all afraid even to, to, to say anything about Christ. Because they were afraid that when they step out to propagate any gospel of Christ or to say anything about Christ, they will be arrested and be killed. So they locked themselves up in the upper room for the fear of the Romans. They were in such state and Christ appeared unto them. But when Jesus Christ appeared inside the small locked room, this verse leads us to believe that he is the resurrected Christ. Christ, who we were all told that died in this time around, he entered into a locked room without passing through the door. He entered into this room where nobody knows whether he came through the windows or the, the doors. He came and he stood among the disciples. And the first word out of Jesus' mouth at that time was shalom. Shalom, which means peace be with you. Peace be with you. Then he showed them his hands and feet. This is important to take note of. The resurrected body of Jesus was not simply spiritual. It was also physical. That's the reason why he appeared physically to the disciples. And he showed his hands and his feet to the disciples. The apostle John makes it a point to include in his gospel, the verse 20, or in, 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 in his gospel, uh, chapter 20, we believe that Jesus Christ literally came back to life after dying and after uh, he taking to the, the tomb, he resurrected back to life. The disciples' reaction for seeing him was rejoicing. They were rejoicing that they have seen the man who can take that spirit of fear that has filled their heart from them. I am sure. They remembered those days that they were with Christ. The time that they were with him, healing the sick, raising the dead. They were, they, I, I, I believe that they remembered those things. And their heart, the Bible said, was filled with rejoicing or joy. The resurrected Christ provided a peace in their heart that everything was going to be okay. Even though they were afraid for, because of the attack from the Romans, Christ gave them the assurance that everything is going to be okay. Tonight, he is giving you that same assurance. Whatever that has kept you in your room and you have locked your rooms or your, your doors, Christ is coming in tonight as he has resurrected from the grave. He's coming in tonight and he's telling, telling you the same thing that peace be unto you, my son. Peace be unto you, my daughter. That everything is going to be okay for you. This is the nature of the peace that comes from Christ. It is not absence of danger, but the presence of God in our lives. The situation for the disciples was precarious. They were, be, be, they, they were behind locked doors. They were behind locked doors. They were wanted men, like somebody who has committed any offense, and police has announced that so-and-so person is being wanted. They were wanted men. 
And if the Romans, or Romans were to lay hands on them, they would arrest them and also kill them. But Jesus was there. And all was well. In the, at the time that all hopes or is lost in the life of the disciples, Christ showed himself up to them. Jesus showed them the hopes in his hands and his feet. That he had endured the cross, endured the death, and is alive again. The resurrected Christ provided them a heart full of peace. In the upper room, the night before the crucifixion, Jesus said unto them, Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the word gives, do I give you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. At the point in time, after hearing this in the life of the disciples, their hearts were troubled. Fear engulfed their heart. The same applies to us. At the time that we find ourselves in difficulties, our hearts are filled with trouble and fear. But tonight, Christ is telling us that all is well. All is well. Jesus made good on his, uh, his promise for the disciples. But he says the same thing to us tonight. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not let your heart be troubled. Why? Because I have overcome the world. Why? Because Christ has over, over, overcome the world. Get this. This is really, impo really important. If you want to share your faith to the lost and dying world, you need a, 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 the personal peace that Christ gives. That only comes from him. Because if you are fully, uh, or if you are in anxiety, and worry, you will be reduced to nothing. At the time that the disciples' heart had been filled with fear and anxiety, they were reduced to nothing. Just like the disciples, if we, if we welcome Christ, he will come and announce his peace in our, in our heart. The, the first thing that we, we looked at was the fact that Christ pronounced peace in the heart of the disciples. The second thing that we will look at as we prepare ourselves for Christ sending us into the world is that he also equips us when he calls. Christ equips the power that comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit. When Christ calls you and when he gives you his peace, he gives you the power that comes from the presence of the Holy Spirit. So just imagine what the disciples will be thinking at that particular time. I wonder if they realize what Jesus was saying to them, to them at all. But Jesus wasted no time in giving the disciples orders, orders to follow. He said, as the Father sent me, I send you. As the Father sent me, I am also send you the same way. In other words, you are to continue the work that I, I started. In other words, Christ was telling the disciples that they were to continue the work that he started. Tonight, he is telling us the same thing that we are also supposed to continue the work that he started. You are now official representative of Christ. You have, become, you have now become the ambassador of Christ to propagate his gospel. Then the Bible says, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Tonight, Christ is going to breathe on you, said that you will receive the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Jesus was align, aligning himself with the Holy Spirit as if to say, as the Father sent me, I send you in the power of the Holy Spirit to forgive sins. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, By the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. In John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, But when the Holy Spirit of when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own, on his own initiative. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. Part of God's redemptive plan includes the pouring out of the Holy Spirit upon all believers, which includes you. The pouring out of the Spirit motivated the early disciples to do what they were to do courageously. 
as they receive the Holy Spirit, they receive courage. And they step out there to do or to fulfill that task. As part of God's redemptive plan in life, including you, you have received the Holy Spirit. And you, like the disciples, must go out there to propagate his word to the whole world. If you are a believer in Christ, then you have the Holy Spirit living inside you. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is that, that still small voice urging you, pleading with you, pushing you to tell others about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is the fuel that drives you to share Christ with others. The Holy Spirit is the fuel for all Christians, not only the priests, not only the, the, the charity assistant, not only the lay readers, but the Holy Spirit is the fuel to all Christians, which includes you. But some say, I don't know how to tell someone about Christ. Some, some of us will say, I don't know. I don't know what to, to tell anyone about Christ. But let me ask you, those of us who are husbands, or those of us who are in a relationship yet to, uh, to, uh, to, to marry, who teaches you how to propose or how to love your spouse? I've not heard any man saying that he's going for five weeks course to learn how he will propose or to love his wife. I've not heard that before. That has been implanted in us. So when you get there, you receive that courage to propose to a woman or to tell somebody, I love you. The same way the Holy Spirit living in us has given us that same courage. He is pushing us. He is enabling us that we go out there to preach the good news to the whole world. The second, the, the third and the final thing that we will learn as Christ is sending us out there to, to preach his good news is the fact that is the purpose that comes from being the Father's instrument of salvation. The purpose that comes from being the Father's purpose of the Father's instrument of salvation. Each and every one of us have been set aside to be used as instruments of God to propagate his gospel. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 19, he says, I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. The same in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, it says, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall have been bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. You have been equipped by Christ. The resurrected power or the resurrection power of Christ has equipped you to, to use you as instrument of his hands to preach his good news to the whole world. Let me ask you this question tonight, my dear Christian friends. Who have you spoken the good news of Christ to? Or who have you declared the saving grace of Christ to in life? Have you given yourself to God to be used as instrument to propagate his gospel? Have you given yourself to Christ to be used as instrument to propagate his gospel? I know whenever we talk about evangelism, many different emotions comes out. When we think about those we love who don't know Jesus Christ, who are bound for hell, it makes us to reason for their salvation. We have close fellowship or close family members who have not heard of God. We have close friends or working, uh, working friends, people at our various offices, our best friends who have not given their life to Christ. Tonight, as Christ is telling us, he has given us the Holy Spirit. He has given us the Holy Spirit and in turn has given us the power and has prepared us as instruments of his hands to go out there to preach his good news to the whole world. May God help us so that even as we celebrate the power of his resurrection, we'll go out there just as he sent the disciples to preach his good news to the whole world. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Recessional him, ancient and modern, 140. Him, 140. <laughs>
kneel before the Holy Sacrament on the altar. Let us give thanks to God for seeing us through another Lenten season in our days. Let's give thanks to God for the gift of life. Let's thank God for the peace that we enjoy. Thank God for sending Christ into this world to come and die for our sins. We shall sing him 172 as we give thanks to God. counted, you will be counted. It's not by your might. It's not your power. It's just by the grace of God. Pray and thank God for your life. Let us thank God for the gift of Christ. Thank God for sending forth his son Jesus Christ into this world to come and die for our sins. The sins that we committed, he came to bear those sins, to suffer for those sins. He came to die, he said that we will receive life. Give thanks to God for this gift. into the hands of God. Pray that even as Christ has empowered us to go out there to declare his good news to the whole world, we will rise from our slumber and go out there to fulfill the mission of Christ. Pray that God should use us as instruments of his hands to preach his good news. Pray for all Christians. to pray for our diocese, the Anglican diocese of Accra, pray for our diocese and bishop, the clergy and the laity, pray that the Holy Spirit of God will dwell mightily in our churches, that our church will grow both physically and spiritually, that the glory will be given to his holy name on high.
Are you sick in any part of your body? Are you troubled? Is your heart filled with fear? Whatever condition you are going through in life, put it before the Almighty God as we kneel before the Holy Sacrament. And trust God that as we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, every dead thing in your life will resurrect tonight. Anything that the enemy has destroyed your life will, will receive a new face. Anything that the enemy has taken from you, God, will return it to you. Pray and put your request before the Almighty God. Modern 309, hymn 309, the second, the, the, the part two of hymn 309. sacrament has left to us a memorial of thy passion. Grant we beseech thee so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of thy redemption. O liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God world without end.
please repeat after me. Blessed be God. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ through God and through man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be the Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, a Most Chaste Spouse. Blessed be Saint Joseph. Blessed be God in his angels and his saints. Blessed be God in his angels 